In the mid 80s, I bought some Harman Kardon equipment new, and they've all had the same problem. Uh, the input, and in some cases the output jacks, apparently were made cheaply and they were prone to fracturing. Uh, last year, the last piece finally uh, had the jacks go on them. Also turned out it had a broken uh, input wire. Uh, when well, my kid called to tell me, since he had stolen it from me, uh, that one of the channels wasn't working. So, I'm going to go through a fix here. All, all three pieces I have have been fixed in slightly different fashions, so I'm doing this to show how the HK870 was repaired in this instance. I opened up the unit and removed the input board and as you can see here the plastic around the jack uh, was cracking. Uh, actually before I took it out if you grabbed hold of the inputs they were wobbly so you knew something was going on and the plastic was cracking and uh, that's what we had here. And here's a shot of the rear of the input board. And you can see the wire to the left channel is uh, broken, uh, I guess from the wiggling of the inputs. It's a very thin gauge wire they used for these boards. And the way it was wrapped on the pins, uh, I guess didn't give it a lot of support. The original jack was mounted in this hole in the cabinet and this was going to be too small for the replacement jacks. I didn't even bother looking to see if they made an original style because the originals were so cheaply made the new ones would be just as bad. And the panel opening from the outside my goal was to maintain as much of the original graphics as possible, specifically the right and left notations. I didn't want to have to uh, put stickers on there to denote them. So we were going to open up that hole and try and maintain as much of the graphics as possible. Now I don't have a lot in the way of precision tools in my uh, workbench. Uh, just your basic power tools. I used a moto tool to open this up uh, trying to keep as close to a symmetrical square as possible. I wasn't overly concerned since it's the back of the cabinet and well unfortunately this is not high value equipment it's just nice equipment. I also kept one of the original mounting holes so that I could line things up uh, somewhat in their original position to give me a point of reference. I cut a small piece of blank steel from some scrap hanging out on the workbench. I could have lined up the screws better but they were close enough for government work. I used self-trapping screws to uh, mount it into the panel. So I now have a new base with which to put holes for the input jacks. I drilled new holes for the input jacks. Unfortunately, I don't have a drill press and my lower hole was drilled a little off center. I was able to compensate for that a little later on, but uh, it'll still work. The signal leads were on very light gauge wire and for some reason uh, Harman Kardon liked using wire wrap posts for their connections on many of their pieces and I even had a tuner where the wires were wrapped but not soldered. Uh, 
you know, which I don't think helped the signal at all. Here, obviously, they were soldered, but the narrow gauge, the flexing of the board from the bad connectors, the wire broke. Now, what I discovered here, it was a lot easier to get things going if I removed the center pin to solder the wires onto the the ground wire onto the pin and then reconnect the ground pin uh, before connecting the uh, signal wires to the outer posts. Uh, I would have preferred just connecting them straight to the circuit board except the hole for the ground wires was not big enough. The four wires that go to the output jack, you can see at the uh, left there, uh, the ground in the center, they do share a common ground, and uh, the red and white for the uh, right and left. Uh, and then we have the connectors going to the amplifier in the upper right, and those are all soldered. I bent the post slightly to uh, make it easier to put things together. Here's a close-up of the signal side. Uh, the wiring's all done. The board was relatively stable, but uh, to prevent flexing and keep it uh, in place, you can see a blob of hot glue there on the chassis rail and that seemed to stiffen things up quite a bit so we should be okay at this point and here's a shot of the wiring on the other side uh, it's pretty straightforward right left ground you know, and uh, we're all done as far as the wiring goes, ready to button it up. And we're all done. The jacks are in place. Now if you notice, there's that red and black insulator at the base of the jacks. I got uh, jacks that had these insulators because Harman Kardon used a single point ground on the system. So all the grounds terminated at one point on the chassis. It is a chassis ground. It might not have made a big difference, but it probably does decrease the chance of a ground loop. Okay, the amp's all done. Plugged it in, tried it out, it sounded sweet, should be good for another 20 years. Sorry I did not put an audio in here of the sound, uh, because one, it was a jury-rigged situation, and two, I didn't feel like having a copyright infringement uh, thrown on me after going through all this work. So, there you go, hope it helps you.